Prince Charles suffered stinging public criticism in the years of his deteriorating relationship with Princess Diana, but the prince's greatest misfortune during this time actually came from a surprising source, according to a royal biographer. Prince Charles and Princess Diana tied the knot in their spectacular royal wedding in 1981, however their marriage would prove to be notoriously rocky. The Prince of Wales suffered some damaging public backlash in the years between their acrimonious 1992 split, and high-profile 1996 divorce. However, Charles's great misfortune is a personal flaw that has led to many of the prince's disastrous moments, according to royal biographer Penny Junner in her 2005 book The Firm. Ms. Junner writes, the Prince of Wales has plenty of shortcomings, but he is not a liar, his great misfortune is that he has never been able to be even faintly economical with the truth. There are so many occasions when the smallest, whitest lie would have saved him a great deal of trouble, starting with his fateful answer on the day of his engagement to Diana about whether he was in love. It has come back to haunt him regularly, as for many years did his admission that he talked to plans. Ms. Junner adds, and when I interviewed him in 1986 and asked him whether having a wife to talk to who had done ordinary, everyday things before her marriage was an advantage in helping him know how the other hand loves, he said he didn't really talk to Diana about that sort of thing, but conversations with Lawrence van der Post were very stimulating from that point of view. His private secretary, Sir John Riddle, almost visibly clutched his head in his hands. She continues, but the most disastrous example was during his television interview with Jonathan Dimbleby when he was asked about his infidelity. The question didn't come out of the blue, and his reply was very well thought out. When the BBC broadcaster asked the Prince of Wales if he had tried to be faithful to Diana during their marriage, Charles replied, yes, until it became irretrievably broken down, us both having tried. Ms. Junner continues, on that occasion his private secretary, Richard Allard, had reinforced the prince's determination to tell the truth, and it was the rest of the world that held their heads in their hands and gasped with incredulity. Author Tina Brown, in her 2007 book The Diana Chronicles, describes how the disastrous Dimbleby interview from Charles came in response to Diana's 1992 secret collaboration with Andrew Morton on his Diana, her true story book. After the Dimbleby revelations, Diana was then spurred onto her bombshell 1995 panorama interview. She writes, no single factor shaped the divorce of the Prince and Princess of Wales more than the decisions they made to involve the media. Without Andrew Morton, Prince Charles would have never have decided to give a disastrously revealing interview to Jonathan Dimbleby of the BBC. She continues, without Dimbleby, Diana would never have planned her retaliation by agreeing to give an incendiary, irrevocable interview to Martin Bashir on Panorama. And together, the interviews locked the royal protagonists into a course of no return. After Diana's bombshell 1995 Panorama interview, in which she memorably said of Camilla there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded, the Queen was finally forced to intervene in the deteriorating relationship.